Good morning, everybody. How are we on this glorious day? Hope everyone's doing well. Welcome to another live stream. And today we're going to announce the winner of the tournament. Let's jump in. Well, I'm still waiting to hear myself talk. It's still playing my music. Oh, I've just appeared on the screen. Wow, magic. Yep, I can hear that talking. So let's start looking through the comments. So we've got from Toowoomba, Chris Robinson. Welcome to you. Good morning from Toowoomba. Blonde Scales 1. Just check, move this over. There we are. I've got my preview up a bit better. Blonde Scales 1. Good evening from Arkansas. Alia Rose. Hello from Chile, Pennsylvania. Blonde Scales 1. We get to enjoy the time change tonight. That's something that is quite strange for me now. Um, here in Western Australia, we don't have de the idea of daylight savings, so the, uh, there's no time change happen. Uh, they did do an experiment, not uh, only a year or two before we moved over here. I should really look at the camera rather than look at the screen, shouldn't I? Uh, the, there, was an, there was an experiment where they actually did it for, I don't know if it was one or two years. Then they had like a referendum, and it was decided, the referendum voted against daylight savings. So we don't have that idea at all. But yet, yeah, other parts of Australia do, so um, New South Wales and Victoria do. I think where Chris is in Toowoomba, I think that's Queensland. Uh, I don't think they do. I don't think they have um, the idea of time of daylight savings either. And I've got to be honest, <laughs> I, I, I actually quite like it. It makes it a lot easier. It makes it more difficult though for other things. So like when we're talking to um, family in the UK, they do have daylight savings, you know, and um, the, the normal time we talk to them is normally about tea time-ish. So when the daylight savings kicks in, it's a whole one-hour jump, and it really throws our meals out for a couple of weeks because of the daylight savings happening in the UK. bit weird, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, that's my daylight sa savings story. Uh, John, greetings from rainy New York. Oh, wish we, we got ever so excited yesterday morning. It, it started raining. We had to quickly dash out and get the washing in off the line, but it started raining. We went and got the washing in, and before we'd even got the washing in, it had stopped. That was it, which was such a shame because you know we were getting excited seeing all this rain. You know, this it looked like the sky was leaking. We haven't had ra rain for oh, it, it seems like months at the moment. Uh, so hopefully, Alia Rose, Blonde Scales One. Who thought that was a good idea? A pox upon them. Yeah, this is quite. I, I've read various things about it, and about um, I was listening to Skeptics Guide to the Universe. They had some questions about it this morning, and one of the things they were saying is um, when the clocks come forward, so you get more daylight hours, it reduces things like um, violent crime at night because you've got the extra daylight. But I've also read other things, and this is now going from memory, where when the clocks change, there's an increase in um, accidents. I think I read somewhere there was an increase in heart attacks, but that's very just something that's sitting in my memory, so I'm not 100% certain of that. But yeah, and there was, you know, when it was at a... I can see years ago there being the value to it, but nowadays, yeah, it's it's weird, isn't it? Um, Will Hodge, howdy everyone. Hope all are well. Welcome to you. Uh, welcome to you, Will. Let me just refresh the comments. Ah, oh, there we go. Um, Miss Marilyn, darling, happy Saturday evening from California. Welcome to you, uh, Andreas. Hello from a slightly damp Brisbane. Yes, yeah, so again, Brisbane, I think Queensland, so they won't get the time change. I don't think they do daylight savings there either. Um, Will Hodge, 1838, uh, 1830, here, yeah, 58 degrees Fahrenheit, windy and time change tonight. Yeah, so we're, it's cold today. It's 18 Celsius, which is, uh, let me just do a quick Google. Uh, 18 C in F. Uh, helps if I use the right keyboard, 18C, about 65 Fahrenheit at the moment, but it will get up to 27, which is uh, not 127, 
If it dropped to 127, I'd be in big trouble. So it get up to about 81 Fahrenheit later on today. The other thing that we've got is the humidity. So the humidity at the moment. Keep pressing the wrong damned buttons. There we go. The humidity at the moment is about 60%. So the humidity is dropping. The other day, our humidity was 80%. Oh, it was a nightmare. Uh, Ricardo, good morning from wet London. Yeah, wet and cold. Um, I've got London's temperature on here. So I've got the temperature of a couple of places in the UK. Um, one's in North Yorkshire, which is where I'm from. It's currently 7 degrees Celsius. And the other one is um, in Norfolk, which is where my wife's from and where my brother-in-law lives. And that's currently 9 Celsius. So, uh, so that's interesting. Uh, Blonde Scales 1. Uh, did you see the Just Turning Says website now? I did. I, I was looking at it just the other day. Let me pull it up. I was looking at it yesterday when he put it on um, Faceake. Or was it Instagram? It's one or the other. I think that's the right one. Yeah, so if we head on over to the screen there, I've just brought that up. So this is just turning. This this is a an Australian maker. Uh, so he's really just launched this. See, so he's now got a shop on there. So you can actually go and see some of the pens he's got. Uh, it's using Squarespace. There we are. It's just loading the page. So I'm guessing he's going to be playing around with this and, you know, trying to improve it over the next couple of weeks. It was loading a lot faster. I wonder if it's because I'm live streaming. When I was looking at it earlier, it was it was instantaneous. It's loading. Uh, but it looks like we're getting a bit of a slowdown at the moment. Let's try refreshing it. Always happens when you try to demo something, doesn't it? Come on, I can see the progress bar here moving. Will it go faster? Maybe if I pedal harder. Anyway, whilst that's loading, let's go back to the camera. That's boring just sitting there watching the page load. Uh, today's mug, I've just been having a mouthful. This is the Avengers, the Iron Man, Captain America, uh, Thor and is it Hulk and I've got peppermint tea this morning right so it's loaded now so let's go back to the screen so on there he's got some examples of pens that he's got with the the, the pricing is obviously Australian dollars uh, so he's got quite a wide range of pens available so yeah definitely head on over if you're looking for for like one of those Australian handmade pens well worth looking at let me just minimise that page. Um, Tom Morley, good morning, good evening. Sorry I'm late. Welcome to you, Tom. BJ, hello, everybody. Chris Robinson, correlation does not imply causation. Sometimes we see patterns like crime or heart attacks that don't really mean anything exactly completely with you. Uh, I say it was just something that was tickling on the back of my head. But certainly the Skeptics Guide to the Universe, they were saying it was more than correlation. Uh, so if you listen to podcasts, it might be worth listening to that. Uh, Will Hodge, not bad, Gary. Fans will always make it feel five degrees Fahrenheit cooler. Yeah, I don't need the fan on today, which is nice. Although I will be honest, my, my fingers are feeling the cold today. I might have to get myself a pair of uh, glasses. Uh, Chris Robinson, amen. I always talk about this when I teach statistics. I do. I often say, especially you know, when, uh, especially my, you know, when you see like figures like this about yes, correlation and causation, but it's quite interesting. Um, I say it was just something that's tickling my mind about some of the the things I saw. Um, I can't remember where I, what even where I even sourced them from. Um, Miss Marilyn, darling. Hi everybody, how's it going? Uh, I actually this week um, I managed to attend a live stream for the first time ever. Normally I watch um, the, uh, live streams in catch up mode, uh, but on Wednesday we had to do a little bit of rearranging my recording session this week. Normally I record on a Monday morning and a Wednesday morning, uh, but this week I did Monday morning and Tuesday morning, which gave me Wednesday free. So I was actually able to uh, join in and catch the Hemingway Jones 
live stream. So first time I've ever been actually on a live stream. Uh, and it was quite interesting seeing how it was going. And I was looking at the chat on there, trying to keep it. And I was thinking, I can understand why he doesn't go through every, every comment because he gets quite a lot. And it was quite interesting just trying to keep up with what was going on in the comments and listen to him. You know, I don't know. I find that quite interesting, quite difficult. But I'm I'm a very single um, focused person. I like to focus on one thing. So I'm either listening to something or I'm reading something or I'm watching something or I'm doing something. Try and do more than one. Really struggle with that. Um, Our topic today, though, let me get it up the web page, is the winner of the Fountain Pen Tournament. I shouldn't have swapped over yet, should I? So, our Fountain Pen Tournament, we came down to two pens, the Monte Verde Ritma or the Twisby Eco. So, this was Sunday's video, then the voting opened over on the YouTube community page. There we go. And... We have a very clear winner, and I expected that. I've got to be honest, when I saw what they were, I'm not surprised. So the winner, by a massive margin, is the Twisby Eco. If I go to my spreadsheet, where I've got my little thing there. So here, what I've done is I've taken the numbers. There were 112 votes cast, of which 28% was for the Ritma, and 72% for the eco so say big amount we translate those back to numbers so 31 people went for the ritma which i think is still a good amount of money and money good amount of no a good poor brain's not working today good amount of people and 81 people so that's 50 more voted there for the twisby eco so yeah quite an interesting thing so the the cup the challenge cup for this tournament, see if I can get this to balance, goes to that Twisby Eco. Whoa, <laughs> trying to balance this without going all over the floor. I thought, yeah, let's. Get, I saw this in a shop the other day, well, and I thought, yeah, we've got to have a little cup for the winner. So that's going to sit now over on my desk for a couple of days until I put the pen away. So it'll sit out there on the actual uh, trophy. Actually, let's put it behind me. There we go. put it there can that be seen yeah there we go there's the winning pen just over my shoulder next to baby yoda All right, let's throw these down let's head back to the comments uh tom morley miss marilyn darling good evening doing well here bj hello mmd uh, Blonde Scales 1, I've got a package waiting at the post office. Have to wait until Monday to get it. Do you know, I hate that when you know it's there and you just can't get to it. Uh, Will Hodge, support those local pen turners. Get custom-made pens to your size and liking, and usually a very good value. Absolutely. Let me just pull up, see if I can get my Instagram. Instagram. Uh, no, I don't want notifications. Right, let me see if I can find the guy. There's an I found another local maker. Here we go. Let me just fetch it up. Let's go to the screen. So this is what I'm currently saving to get uh, from next. So these is these are his Instagram posts of some of the pens he's been making. Uh, not sure where he's based. It doesn't say very much um, on it on his bio about that. Can we see? No, about this. No, that's about me, isn't it? Not. Uh, anyway, uh, so I'm I'm looking at these. Which is what I liked this one. He put this up the other day. I actually commented on it because I do like it. So I'm hoping he's got something like that available when I come around to having the money, uh, which will be about another two or three weeks' time, hopefully. What I'm interested here is he's doing a lot of these pens he's doing with botnib units, where a lot of the local ones do um, uh, more like Yoho, and we've got Mr. Cypress as well in there. 
Um, so I do want a bot one. So the next pen I want to get, I want with a bot nib. So yeah, that's someone who I'm going to look at next. So again, it's an Australian maker. Uh, carrying on this year with my theme of focusing on pens made by Australian makers. Uh, Alia Rose, what's coming? Blonde Scales 1, the new Caveco Sport, the purple Sport from Gold Spot, and my first Lamy Safari. Is uh, I, I like I like the look of the um, the new Caveco Sport. That's that uh, is it apricot they call it. Not a colour for me, I will be honest. Uh, but it looks an interesting colour. Um, uh, do you know my poor brain today? I'm having one. You know, you get, you get these days where you get a brain fog. Uh, now the weather's cooling down, the pollen's coming out, so I'm suffering terrible with um, hay fever. So I do take medication for it, but you know, I've been taking it for three days, and my brain is still fogged. And my poor eyes. My son, uh, a couple of days ago, came in. The, this is really when the hay, when the pollen and my hay fever really kicked in. He came and he took one look at me and he said. How much did you upset mum to have black eyes like that? My eyes were so swollen and itchy. And it did look like I had a pair of black eyes. Um, so I've been taking the medication. So I'm, I'm on day three now. But it's still... I mean, my eyes are sat here burning and running. Uh, Wool Hodge. Yes, that, that gold spot exclusive is alluring to me. Love the colour. Alia Rose. I've been considering that purple Caveco. It's quite striking. Yeah, it is. I... I um, Again, I'm not overly into purple, but I think it's nice having those unusual colours. Blonde Scales 1, I love purple. Oh, perfect reason to buy it then. Ricardo, fresh from the London Pen Show, my first one. I handled a Mont Blanc or two. Almost bought a vintage one for less than £100. Wow, that's good. Ended up buying a couple of cheap dollar pens. I'm currently watching the Penultimate Dave series that he does from the London Pen Show. He's done it for the past few. So he goes and records and he looks at all the tables, I believe. And then he creates you know, five or six videos going through it all. And it's quite nice to watch them. And, you know, we sit there and I keep saying, oh, that's nice, that's nice, that's nice. Um, hardest part is it's difficult to see the price because obviously a lot of them are, are written on stickers and it's hard to see the stickers. Uh, Adia Rose, I imagine a glow in the dark of vehicle sport, I'd buy a dozen. Yeah, I think I would. I think, yeah, you know, because sometimes, yeah, they're glowing it, but then is it, I don't, but then you think to yourself, hmm, yeah. Uh, Blonde Scales 1, I skipped a comment there. Blonde Scales 1, I can make a preppy glow. Can I get on the screen? Uh, Teresa Harris, Teresa Harris. Hello, Gary. Hello, everyone. Welcome to you, Teresa. BJ, I wish I could still get the clear brown spot from Galen Leather. Missed out on that one. Yeah, I, I, I swear I should look more often for pens as gale and leather. Uh, Blonde Scales 1, that's a pretty pen. Yeah, I thought that when I saw it, I thought it was different. Will Hodge, in my opinion, bot nibs seem a bit softer than Yoho. This is one of the reasons why I want to get them. I don't really have any bot nibs in my collection. Most of them are what, you know, the manufacturer's nibs which a lot of them are you her. Uh, I may have one which is made for the for a manufacturer by a bot and just not realise. I've got that Schmidt nib on a Bennu. I've got a bot nib on a Moonman pen uh, that was sold as being a bot nib. Uh, so that's what that's quite interesting. That's why I thought, yeah, I want to try out some bot nibs. I've got that Mr. Cypress nib. We'll, like, we'll take a look at that in a pen in a little bit. Uh, Blonde Scales 1, the trees here will soon be flinging pollen everywhere. Uh... Yeah, I hate it when it happens. You know, I'm going to be a, fortunately. I I just keep um, uh, is it loratadin, uh, which is hay fever medication. But if it keeps up like this, I'll go to the doctors. Um, about th I want to say about three years ago, it was that bad. I had to have a uh, a special uh, uh, a one where it was I think a, a it was either two monthly or three monthly injection, uh, just to help keep it down because it was so bad. Uh, Miss Marilyn Darling, when my hair when my hair fever kicks in, it looks like someone knocked me down a flight of stairs. So I hear you, you hang in there. Yeah, it's hopefully it won't be too bad. And the other thing I think which made it worse is the day it started, everybody was out mowing the lawn, so there was a lot of you know grass pollen being kicked up as well. Uh, Chris Robinson, I want to put Diamine Imperial Purple in that Kaveco. 
Oh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I don't have Imperial Purple. I've got um, Mombodo's hat. Um, I like that, but it's a, quite a dark purple. And I'm quite liking um, Diamond Violet. I haven't had that in a pen for a while. Maybe I need to do that. Hmm, something to think about. Uh, Teresa, uh, I got the Bennu Earl Grey tea pen today. Very, It's very nice, and I ordered both Diamond Sepia and the Bilberry inks. I couldn't decide which ink I wanted to use. Bilberry sounds nice. Yeah, I, I, I'm on an ink buying free, so I'm not buying any more inks. But yeah, I think I want. I've I've seen Bilberry a couple of times. It looks a really nice color. Uh, John, I like the Kaveco Student Edition pens. Again, not really looked at them. I've only got um, Kaveco couple, oh, some Kaveco spots, and then I've got a pen that Kaveco made for cult pens. Never use it because it's just too small for me. But I pulled the nib out of it. Got that nib in another pen. Uh, Ricardo, I've seen the first two videos from Dave. I appear in a flash in one of them. Awesome. Yeah, I, I watched the second one yesterday. So I, what I do with uh, a lot of my YouTube videos, depending where what I'm doing, but things like going around the London, London Pen Show, I like to watch that one on the TV. Uh, you know, you've got that nice big screen. Uh, uh, Will Hodge, hey, Chris. Try Diamond Bilberry. Nice ink that falls between blue and purple. That's from Will Hodge. Uh, Teresa, the pear trees are blooming here. Pretty trees, but terrible pollen. I bet they are. As I say, it's, it's just awful at the moment. My poor eyes. We don't even, don't even have any flowers in the garden, so I can't even blame them. Blonde Scales 1, still waiting for Opal Blanks to come in so I can order a Just Turnings pen. Yeah, I, I don't know how often he gets his um, blanks orders, but he usually is really good about communicating when they come in. Uh, Mar uh, Miss Marilyn, I highly recommend Allegra. It's some of the best, but it's expensive, but it's worth it. I will have a look at that. Let me get... I didn't get my notepad out this morning. There we go. Whoops. Got it out now. Press the wrong button. Just completely messed up my previews. Oh dear, what have I done? Uh, there we go, we're back. That's better. So, Allegra. I've just made a note of that. Pine and oak trees are getting ready. Uh, Blonde Scales 1. Chris, uh, the Imperial Purple has a gold sheen. Just love it. And Will, uh, Cross Violet is also very nice. It's, yeah, I'm surprised how much I quite like Violet inks. Uh, Teresa, uh, I can't take Allegra. It turns my personality into an angry personality. Took it once and my husband asked, what's wrong with you? Yeah, and according to my wife, a lot of the medications I've got <laughs> do seem to make me grumpy, as she puts it. Um, well, she doesn't actually use the word grumpy. She uses a very different word, which I won't repeat here. Um, so that's all the comments. Let's head on over to the overhead camera, if I didn't mess it up when I knocked everything to that earlier. Here we go. Let me just reposition this ever so slightly. So, pens for this week. Been an interesting week. I've used quite a few pens. So we'll start with a pen I've been using for my responses on my uh, video. This is the Waterman Karen. Beautiful gold nib on this. Still got a fair bit of ink, I think. Be but because I'm only using this for a week, so it got finished being used yesterday, and it'll go back in the pen case after this. Just going to move this down a bit. Waterman Karen. I do love this, This uh, I think it's called Marine Amber. It's a medium and it's 18 karat gold. It's not a cheap pen, I will be honest with you. $430. I would eventually like to get another one, but I want to get the one that's in the green colour. But that's like getting chicken's teeth, so I've got to keep looking for that. And it is expensive. The ink by Diamine. 
and it's hot blood. Really nice ink, really nice pen, really nice combo. Loved using that this week. But as I say, that's going back in the pen case after we've had today's video. Now we get into the daily pens. So the first one, this is the Just Turnings Mimus. So we've just taken a look at the Just Turnings pen. I think there was one of these actually in this color on there. This is um, black copper. And the camera really doesn't do this justice. Honestly, it's so pretty. Why I'm agitating it is I've got a shimmer ink in here and I don't seem to get a lot of the shimmer showing up. So just give it a chance. So we've got here a Just Turnings. The Mimus range, these are um, uh, resins that he pours himself. Uh, just Turnings Mimus. It's got a broad Yoho nib. No, it's not. I'm lying. It's got a medium Yoho nib. And price-wise, when I got it, it was $170. I believe they've gone up. Contact him for the updated. Same with all the pens, really. Contact them for updated pricing. The ink is an Australian ink, Van Diemen. So it's made in Tasmania. And this is Twilight Mist. One of the first inks that I got, I think it might have been ink number three or four, when I got back into fountain pens. So I've had it quite a while. Nice purple. I can see where the Twilight Mist name comes in. I say it does have a shimmer, but I struggle to get it to come through. To come through, so that's one of the issues I've got with the ink. And it's not just this pen. No matter what pen I put in it, put it in, really struggle to get that shimmer, which is a shame. When it does come through, it's really nice. It's like a real bright purple shimmer. Next up, we've got. Again, an Australian pen, 3D printed pen, platypus pens. I love, one of the things I love with this pen is the texture. Very nice. Again, we've got a Yoho nib on there, and we've got a Schmidt converter. This is nearly empty. My current plan when this is run out is I'm not going to em uh, refill it. I'm getting near the end of my pens in use month, so I'm not intending to refill any pens now going forward, unless I really, really am into that pen. So this is a Platypus pens, and it's the Model 10. This time we have got a broad nib on here. Price-wise, again, when I got it, it was $170. May have gone up since then. The ink, it's another Van Diemen ink. and it's Apple Island Green. Some people, they refer to Tasmania as Apple Island, so I can see where the name comes from. Again, nice pen. I love this 3D printed pen. Up next, another one I've got to twiddle around with. So the ink in here isn't the ink that I wrote with earlier this month. It ran out. So I've refilled it with a different ink. This is a Just Turnings Enceladus model, and it's done with a Just Turnings Black, not just with a Brooks Blanks, Jonathan Brooks Blanks from his Carolina Pen Company. It's called Golden Blue Jay. Beautiful, very pretty. The ink I've put in here, I want to experiment with the ink. Again, I bought it at the same time as both both the other two um, Van Diemen. So I've had it, you know, quite a while. And it's another one with a shimmer, and it's called uh, Azure Kingfisher. So it's got like a, like a blue colour, and then with a gold shimmer. So hopefully we might get the shimmer come out in this one. And see it agitating away. Again, really pretty pen. We've got another broad Yoho nib on there. So let's see if we get any of that shimmer coming through. Just turnings. Enceladus with a broad nib. I'm going to put here GBJ Golden Blue J, and the price for this pen when I got it, 185 Aussie dollars. The ink, I say, by Van Diemen, and it's Azure Kingfisher. A 
looks fairly wet doesn't it? let me just do a bit see if we get a bit of a splodge there then hopefully what i'll do in the after we've done the next one see if i remember you know what my brain's like we can come back and see if we can see that that shimmer coming through but yeah really pretty this is going to be the problem this month with my uh pens in use because I've, i like them all i was saying in one of the comments to uh video yesterday what i might end up doing is just having to put all the names in a hat and pull it out when i try to rank them because i'm really having a hard time trying to like differentiate and come up with a ranking uh, but i've got another week or so to do so to come up with that so that's something i will think on anyway this one i'm showing this is by that pen bloke this is again a really nice pen this is he calls it the fountain pen and this is the materials called something special very big pen compared to the others let me just fetch it out that just turn his pen a lot bigger a lot wider i find this extremely comfortable to use i love the length of it i love the width on it beautiful long section as well this is another broad nibbed pen i think yeah i stood a fair bit or at least another day if not maybe two i might get out of that of ink in there really comfortable to use so this is the that pen bloke and it's called a fountain pen i do believe that that pen bloke has also got a website worth googling for him price wise is 100 well when i got it, it was 190 dollars the ink is by robert oster right green nice bright green ink nice ink so that's the that pen bloke so let's just go and look at that ink right i'm seeing hopefully it's coming through on the camera certainly ju just turnings and then sell all those words have got a lot of that shimmer in and there's a fair bit in van and a bit in demon so I'm hoping it's like a greeny gold type shimmer. Looks quite nice. I say I'm hoping that the camera's catching that. So the next pen. Another just turnings pen. I've got three just turning pens at the moment. This one is another Enceladus model, and this is Brooks Blanks Elven Wood. It's a resin, it's not a wood. Very nice. Matte finish to it. Feels really pretty. Again, we've got in here this is fairly full I only filled this oh start of the week I think it was maybe late last week or late the week before so we've got here just turnings Enceladus this is a broad nib but this is a Mr. Cypress nib slightly narrower line than i see with the yoho nibs so it's more like a i would say it's more like a like an asian br uh, broad rather than a european broad uh, price wise this was get the right entry when i got it was 195 aussie dollars the ink by robert oster and it's aussie brown get some nice shading in the sink I'm not sure if it, again if it comes over on the camera like on here we're getting quite a bit of shading coming through nice brown does remind you of seeing some of the browns that you see here in australia so that's the just turnings um, this is the elven wood so i better put elf there just i just put that so i can differentiate between the models Pens by KC. This is a wooden pen. This is made by this is made from Northern York Burl. And I know I keep saying to it, these trees grow about half an hour ish drive from where I live. So a little bit of a personal touch there. Very nice pen. Wooden pen. Fully lined with ebonite. It really does pay that attention to detail. And on here we've got a 1.1 stub nib get a beautiful line from this pen so we've got here a pens by casey you 
can see, and this is uh, got to get Marcus I making sure I spell this right. Thirteen with a one point one. He does a fourteen. I don't, don't don't know if he did a twelve, but I've definitely seen some fourteens as well. That's down to the width of the section, and this is not cheap. Worth every cent, but not cheap. Handmade wooden pen. And the ink by Robert Oster. And it's Cafe Crema. Again, gorgeous shading ink, even more so than the Aussie Brown. So lift this one up. Even on the cheap paper that I normally use for my daily writing, get loads of shading. This paper is Midori MD Cotton Pad. So it's a reasonable quality, but get some nice shade in there. So that's the pens by Casey. The final pen. This is the pen I'm going to be using this week for my responses. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting to use this pen. The first impressions of this pen go out this afternoon. If you're a member, you've already had it for a couple of days. But the actual first impressions goes to uh, public 2 o'clock Western Australian time this afternoon. This is the Visconti Homo Sapiens Dark Age. Wow, I love this pen. Looking forward to using it this week, to start really using it in anger. Uh, up till now, since filming that first impressions, I've just been using it for bits and bobs. Uh, so this week, when I get to actually use it, and actually use it in anger, I say, use it for a lot of writing. it will be interesting to see how it goes. I'm going to give, show you something in a second after I've written with it. 18 karat gold. And this is a vacuum filling pen, or a power filler, I think they call it. So we've got a Visconti, Homo sapiens. It's a broad nib and it's 18 karat gold. Not a cheap pen in any way, shape or form. $1,141 when I priced it up again uh, just a couple of weeks ago. I didn't pay that much. I got it when it was on sale. So it was more or less what I would call a reasonable price. The ink is by Diamine. And it's Earl Grey. Beautiful dark grey ink. Nearly black at times. But what I have noticed with this, this is an extremely wet writing pen. Very wet writing. I'm going to fetch in this. This is the notebook I'm using at the moment. Uh, there we are, Baby Groku. It was I actually got it from Coles, so it's fairly cheap paper. Uh, as you can see, it really shows through normally anyway. So this was my writing that I did from this morning. So I was using that platypus pen this morning. But you can see here how much feathering that I'm getting with this Visconti. You know, virtually every sentence got loads and loads of feather in there. And then if I go over there, you can see how it's bled through. So what I'm going to have to start doing now, instead of normally I would do the next day on here, I'm going to have to start start skipping. It was only a cheap notebook. I think I, we paid something like $6 for it, so it's not exactly expensive. So I think what I'm going to be doing is every other page. And I should really have done that for a while because... Most of the other inks, if I just go back, you know, you can see a fair bit showing through on each page, which I think does distract a bit when I do my photos. But certainly with this Visconti, got that much that you, I don't think I'll be able to read whatever's written. So I'm going to start skipping pages and see how that goes for the next week. And then if, I, if it feels all right, I'm going to carry on doing it whilst I'm using this cheap notebook. I've got about seven of these, so... Uh, I don't mind doing that. So anyway, that was the Earl Grey there. Not the Earl Grey. That was the Visconti Homo Sapiens. Let's swap the view back to the camera. And let's wiggle my bum over. There we go. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Let's straighten myself up in my seat. Uh, my posture's not the best at the best of times. So let's see if we've got any new comments. Uh, 
Miss Marilyn Darling, you poor thing. Thank you. Andreas, Gary, may I ask what ink you've used for the heading on your pens in, of the week page? Yeah, um, so the ink is, I think it's Little Bob. I'm just going to check. I'm just going into my database now. I can tell you exactly. Uh, JKL. Oh, yeah. So it's in this pen. This is a uh, Lamy AL Star. And this has got a 1.5 stub nib on it. And the ink is Diamine Garland. I thought for a second it was it was um, one of my little bobs or little pip. But hopefully, let's get it in the camera. Hopefully, if you can see, it's got this gorgeous, it's got a beautiful, like, bright pink sheen to it. And then occasionally you do get some uh, shimmer. There's a shimmer in there as well. I very rarely see the shimmer, uh, but I quite like the, the uh, garland. And that was from, I've gotten here, from the 2021 ink vent calendar. Uh, Andreas looks pretty flash. It is. I like what I try to do. I try to use this 1.1 stub nib for all my headings. And then... Uh, what I then do is I like to put in there a nice, usually just a sheen in ink, but occasionally I will put a shimmer, just so it gives a little bit of visual interest to, to the headings. And you'll see this being used in, I'll see this, I don't actually write the headings on the video, but they're already there in quite a few videos. Uh, BJ, what colour ink did you use for the week heading? So, yep, yeah, just just had that one. Um Blonde Scales 1, Wondering 2. BJ, lol, I noticed it too. Everyone's asking the same there. Uh, Ali Aroz asking the same. Ali Aroz, oh, I bet my, my son could 3D print a glow in the dark pen for me. I need to hit him up after the stream and see what he says. Yeah, one, this is really, he does a few models like this and he does loads of different colours. One of the things he has put in here is there's a little bit of metal so that it has like. Um, when it's rolling, the metal gives a little bit of weight down. I want. To, I'm going to say here, you know, it's it's just a little bit in one part of the pen. The idea is that it stops it from rolling too far, and then it comes to a nice halt. Very nice little touch to it, but makes a big difference. Also, adds a little bit of weight because 3D printed stuff can be quite light. Uh, blonde scales one. Ooh. Uh, Wool Hodge, I find pens with Ebonite feeds seem to digest and deliver shimmer ink nicely. Of course, the shimmer inks will always be changing, clogging issues if not maintained. Yeah, so that's why I know it's a plastic feed on here. Yeah, I'm just picking out one of the shim one of the ones. Why I've put them in these pens, I know these are dead easy to pull the nib and feed out. Uh, what I do is when I've finished using a shimmer ink in a pen, is I pull the I do pull out that nib and feed. I give the nib a really good clean under running water, cold water. And then the feed I put through my ultrasonic cleaner. So it gets really, it gets all that ultrasonic goodness or whatever it is, uh, you know, well, sound waves, and hopefully gets most of the shimmer particles out. Uh, Chris Robinson, Do Doodlebud, had a 3D pen printing project. Uh, I'm not sure if he finished it though. He's too much of a perfectionist. Yeah, I do. I've a couple of times I've hummed and had about saving up for a 3D printer. I just don't know what I'd use it for. Um, you know, I know. Yes, you you could print pens, but then you've got to have the design chops to actually be able to design it. Um, but everything else, I've been able to sort with you know, stuff that I've got or, you know, buy, you know, to be honest, a lot of the time, cheap stuff. So, yeah, not sure if I'd ever use it. Uh, Aries, hi all. How's it going? Going good there, Aries. Welcome to you. Alia Rose, I'm pretty sure there are existing templates he could start with. I'm more worried about the glow filament. He hates working with it as the strontium, allium, allium, as the strontium aluminate clogs the nozzle. Uh, I say, yeah, it's something I really would. I, I just keep humming and hammering, but I say it's to me when I get into something, I like to have projects in mind and not just one project, but a number of projects I can use it for. You know, the idea is you start with an easy project and build up and add things on. And at the moment, I just don't have anything that I can think of. Uh, 
Chris, oh, and modern glow-in-the-dark plastics are a little disappointing, really. They don't glow for very long with no radium or, tri or tritium in. Uh, Silent Ink Chronicles, that pen is so beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, there's, it's really been really good. Um, Tom Morley, hit them with light from a UV flashlight. They really pop. That's a good idea. I wonder if you get the same with, like, I've got my little LED with that single LED bulb. I wonder if that would help. Uh, Alia Rose, the strontium aluminium, yeah, that word, ones, usually aqua or green glow, can be pretty good, better than the old zinc sulfide formulas, yeah, but not as easy to pronounce. Uh, Teresa, wow, Gary, that's a step up the Visconti, absolutely it is. Um, it was purely a fluke. Um, I got um, a massive refund from something. Uh, that we've been waiting for for a long time uh, and it was a case of I'm never going to get this sort of money again uh, what's something nice that I can get with it I did think about actually upgrading my phone or upgrading to a new camera uh, for for doing my videos with but then I thought no I've been after a Visconti Homo sapiens for so long and my mouth sal salivates every time and so that's why I ended up, I thought, now stuff this. Um, it was just before Christmas. I thought there's going to be Christmas sales coming up, which there was. So I got, got a sale price for it. So I thought, yeah, going to get that. Uh, Teresa, hold the Visconti closer to the camera. Let me go back to the camera view then for a second for you. Um, yeah, there we go. Can we get the camera to focus? doesn't want to focus today let me just move the mic over ever so slightly there we go so this is the dark age beautiful and then i see we got that gorgeous nib there i don't think this is in focus for some reason it doesn't want to focus today but yeah beautiful pen a lot heavier than what i was expecting i will be honest uh, welcome to Alia Rose, who's uh, joined as a member. Don't forget, membership is available. Um, members get earlier access to videos, so it's ready to go. I've just got to remember now to go in and press the buttons. Tuesday, the video that would go to, out to the public on Tuesday will be made available earlier this morning. Uh, I do a weekly short video. You see part of it in the intro of all the pens I've been using during the week. Uh, that goes out to members only. Uh, we've done one members only uh, live. I'm planning on another one. It might be next weekend. Just got to you know, finalise some details. Uh, so what I, we did with the last one, for, again, members only, it was like a work with me. So on a Saturday morning, my time, that's when I uh, pull together all the scripts and everything that I need for this particular live stream. So what I did is we did a live stream as I was doing that. So, you know, going through whilst I was pulling stuff together and just having a, a general chat. So hopefully we might do that again this week. Uh, so welcome back, Alia Rose. Alia Rose, thank you for joining me. Uh, Marilyn, Miss Marilyn, darling, that's a paper, not the ink. It is, um, but even on uh, more fountain pen friendly papers, it's very very wet you'll see it in the first impressions when i did my first impressions it's an absolute gusher um, little bob is the 30 milliliter and robert is the larger bottle size yeah i've got um little bob which is robert there's little mo uh which is diamine maureen uh, what are the other two mo. let me uh there's robert there's mo let me just swap this round. I can hopefully show you. Um, so we've got iPhone. There we go. So this is my app. So we've got uh, Colt Pens. And I can't remember the names of the ones I've got. So I've got Little Bob, uh, which is Li Robert, Little Chris, Christopher, Little Herbie. Not sure what that one is. Little Mo and Little Pip. Uh, the little bob that's there we go that's like a purpley color this is one that i do like 
I need to get a better shot for that for my thumbnail for it. Whereas, uh, say, oops, you know, little, the other one I like, little pip. This one is a dark, like, like more of a purple, but it's got a beautiful dark sheen to it. So let's uh, go back to the camera. So that was a quick look at my app there. That's where I keep all my inks and my pens. Uh, Tom Marley, I love that Diamine, uh, Diamine Cult Pens groups of inks. Yeah, there's some really nice ones. The other Diamine Cult Pens series I really like is the Deep Dark. Yeah, I've only got the Deep Dark Green. Um, I say I'm on an ink frying, ink, ink frying, ink buy and freeze. Uh, so that's why I don't have any more of those. But I love the name of it, Deep Dark Green. That's what comes into my head every time I read it. Um, and it is a nice green as well. Uh, Blonde Scales 1, I have some of the deep darks as well. Uh, Silent Ink Chron Chronicles, I did my first order from Colt Pens this week, got an exclusive ink. I love ordering from Colt Pens. Only reason I'm not doing it, doing it at the moment, it's the Australian uh, do dollar, uh, which is just so weak. So it makes anything from overseas so expensive. Uh, uh, Miss Marilyn, I'm not a fan of the Lil series. They all look black. I like colour bright rainbow colours. Uh, I'm not too light, just right. Yeah, I, I can see where you're coming from there because they do uh, certainly, unless you can get the light bouncing right, they do look very, very dark. Blonde Scales 1, I'm trying to wait and see what good sales they have uh, for their birthday month. I think Colt Pens usually have crazy sales all the, or have sales all the time which uh, Miss Marilyn Darling's calling out. Colt Pens have some crazy sales. Sometimes Diamine 30 mil for $4. Can't beat that uh, when, with a stick. Yeah, that's why in my collection, about 75% of my inks are uh, Diamine, and they've all come from Colt Pens. But, you know, they're just so cheap. Uh, Blonde Scales 1, yeah, it's not that much more to get a 30 milliliter bottle instead of a 2 or 4 milliliter sample. Yeah, again, a lot of what I use, how I got so many inks is uh, Colt Pens has got a, a good free international shipping amount. So if I was buying a pen, what I would do is I would add black and red notebooks or diamine ink into it to get to that free level. Uh, unfortunately, I, I don't know why, but they're no longer doing uh, diamine. Uh, oh God, sorry, brain's gone dead. They're no longer doing black and red. Uh, notebooks, which is a shame because I really, really like them. Uh, Alia Rose, buying Diamine anywhere except to cut pens is silly. Absolutely with you there. Uh, Silent Ink Chronicles, I got a Diamine 80 milliliter for $14. I thought it was a mistake. Uh, Miss Marilyn Darling, Louise Pip. Uh, Andreas, Little Pip looks a bit like the new Lamy Dark Purple. Um, yeah, that's so. Uh, that's been everywhere. It's talking about is it dark lilac? I think. Uh, Alia Rose, I got their pumpkin shimmer and it's magical. Yeah, I don't have the pumpkin. I've just got um, the only orange I've got from them is Blaze Orange. I'm not really an orange ink person. I've got a couple. I've got Blaze Orange. I've got Van Diemen Deciduous Beach, which again I got way back when I got back into it struggle with it. I just don't know what it is about it just doesn't look right to me blaze orange not too bad then I've got the oranges that were in the um, ink events uh, Chris Robinson I wonder how long it would take the, the Lamy dark violet to pop up controversial absolutely uh, uh, blonde scales one I got my almost half off Bennu during the birthday sales last year wow that was good Chris Robinson dark lila uh, dark lila uh, Miss Marilyn Darling, I'm not a fan of the black and red. I've got to tell you, Apica is pretty good and it's cheap. Yeah, it's interesting you should mention that. I can't remember when it's come. When it's, let me, I can tell you. And let's let's go and look at the next app that I've got on here. Let's go on. I'm showing all my apps off. So this is a, a, a brand new app I've still got in uh, in development. This is where. I'm using it to actually manage and plan uh, my my media. So the, all the videos that I make 
they all go through this. So let me go for Apica because I've just filmed it. Uh, we go Apica paper first impressions. As you can see, it's ready to publish. Uh, I recorded it on the 4th of March and it's due to be published on the Tuesday, the 26th of March. So coming up in what, is that three weeks? Will be my first impressions of this Apica notebook. Here we go. Very quick look. Go on, I'll sneak you around to the back page. There you are. Sneaky look there at that. So that's coming up at the end of the month. Uh, let me go back to the camera. You don't need to still be seeing the screen. Um, uh, Cosmo Air Paper's nice. I've, uh, I've got a, a, a sample pack which had, I think it's either four or five sheets of Cosmo Air. Uh, so yeah, really liking it. Why I liked the black and red is I do like Oxford Optic Paper. Um, I find that's really nice. But as I say, it's just so difficult to get hold of. I can get a B5, which is this size, but that's just too big, whereas it's Apica, that's an A5. So join me in about three weeks' time and see what I think about it. Uh, BJ, I like Apica Paper as well. Uh, Miss Marilyn Darling, I've already done a review on the new Dark Lilac, if you're interested. Yeah, go and check it out. I'll, uh, there's usually, is I think it's virtually, virtually every day, there's a new ink coming out at the moment on Miss Marilyn Darling's stream. Really worth looking at. Um, <laughs> Miss Marilyn Darling, what do you think of Apica just sneaky peek? You can tell us we won't tell. Um, so... I've only been able to find one place which sells it here in Australia. That's uh, Pulp Addiction, which I don't often buy from. Uh, this little notebook here is, uh, how many pages was it? 28, 28 sheets, so that's 56 pages. In the video, I do tell you what that works out to uh, on a per dollar, but it's $5. So it's not very thick, but... When you work it out on a per sheet basis, it's actually really good value. I quite liked it. As you can see here, the bottom one I did with the Homo sapiens. So you can see how wet it is compared to the others. Um, and there you go. So we do get a bit of bleed through with it here. The rest of them weren't too bad, but I quite like it. It was twice in, quite a nice paper nice texture to it feels like I'm not sure if it's coated but it feels very smooth but yeah uh, check out check out the actual thing um, since I have my notes nearby I can tell the price I had paid $70.47 US for my Bennu talisman that's not actually too bad I uh, can't remember how much I, well again I can it's in my app uh, oh, 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 where have we got so oh I'm just going sneaky 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 Pete's in all my apps today uh, I've got the Benu Talisman in here, no. I mean, this is the next version I'm working on, so I've got a, I've just been reworking as part of the user interface on this. So, a Benu Talisman. There's a picture of it, uh, pen details. So how much? So when I bought it, it was 167 Aussie dollars. And when I last checked the price, which was November of last year, it was 230 Aussie dollars. So in the two years that I've gone, you know, the price has gone up from 167 to 230. But the vast majority of that is, A, I priced it from different companies. So I bought it from Goulet Pens, but my updated pricing was from Colt Pens. And the exchange rate has really gone up. So, yeah, you know, view my home screen. I might actually do a, a uh, go through my home screen one day on the on the live as maybe the discussion thing. Let me know is that something you're interested in? A look at what's on my home screen on my phone. Uh, Andreas, interested in your thoughts on the Apica paper? I started with Clairefontaine Essentials and stayed with it because fountain pen paper is hard to find in Australia. Absolutely with you there, Andreas. It's absolutely ridiculous. <coughs> <coughs>
I know Rodeo is owned by Claire Fontaine, or it might be the other way around, but they're the same company. I really, I'm not overly into um, Claire Fontaine paper, or I, I don't know why, but to me, I seem to get a lot of skipping on it. Uh, it feels like there's like a coating. Um, black and red, as I say, I quite like, but uh, Office Works sell them, but you can either get B5 or A4, you can't get A5. Um, I've tried Office Works do a number of other brands, but I just found their paper really. Uh, best way I can describe it is crap. This one here, these came from Coles. I know this is a bit of an Australian one. And let me just reach over here. I've got still got to do the review on this one. This is also from Coles. Um, the paper feels quite nice. Uh, I haven't written on it yet. This one's a, a B5. It's 80 GSM paper. But they do a number of different sizing. I think this was, I want to say, six Aussie dollars. And that's for for a lot of pages. Does, does it tell you how many? It's 8mm ruled. Recycled paper. No, it doesn't tell you anywhere how many pages. So that'll be something I'll end up counting that because I like to do it like a, pay, a per page uh, pricing because that's a nice way to compare things. But yeah, they do do this size. They do um, B, B6. I think there might be an A5 as well. But as I said, I haven't, I haven't done a review on that. That's coming up. Um, not sure when. It's, it's in my system. Uh, Miss Marilyn Darling, interesting texture, right? Uh, Chris Robinson, yeah, I got one of those notebooks from Pulp Addiction. Uh, if I hadn't started making my own notebooks, I might have got some more. Yeah, that one, came, I say, came from Pulp Addiction. And I'll be back. I will be buying more. Um, wait till the first impressions video to find out what I say. Uh, Blonde Scales 1, it was $132 before discounts. That's good value. Uh, Miss Marilyn Darling, not a fan of Claire Fontaine or Rodia. Only comes in pads and dot grids, and they're so skippy. Yeah, so that's not just me who was getting that issue with skipping. <laughs> At least I'm glad about that. Uh, Miss Marilyn Darling, CVS Calibre notebook paper is excellent. It's too bad they don't have it all over the world. It would really take off. Yeah, that's why I've got a lot of these. I say they come from Coles. They're, you know, they're not brilliant, but they're not bad. What I try to do is buy notebooks. You know, lots of different notebooks to try. So this here, this is a you know, 64-page A4 binder book. Uh, it was either Kmart. I think this was Kmart. I think it was something like a dollar. Um, so there's where I was doing my initial testings on it on the front page. And there's over on the back. You know, not bad paper. And they do them in different sizes. So they do this A4, they do they do A5, they do uh, they don't do dot grids. I think they do lines, plane, and graph. That you know they're aimed at school kids, but it's actually not bad paper. Um, this one here, this is my you know what I call my rough book. I got this from uh, a company called Typo. Um, let me get to the front page. Bought it a couple of years ago. Uh, should have been ten dollars. I think I paid two dollars for it, you know, because it was on offer. But again, not not brilliant. But for what I use it for, it's perfect. You know, you don't need to spend a lot on paper. Have got any other notebooks I can show you? No. But yeah, there, there isn't a big choice here in Australia. Uh, Miss Marilyn Darling uh, from Alia Rose. I need to pick up some Calibre to try. I've got a CVS like a mile and a half away, so no excuses. Um, who's the other one? Is it? Oh, there's somebody else who talks about that paper a lot. Um, I can say Chris Science, I think, is it? Mentioned that's quite a lot. Uh, BJ, the Walmart Pen Gear Heavyweight Paper is fountain pen friendly as well. Uh, Alia Rose, hard agree on the pen plus gear. I try to pick what the ones made in Vietnam. Yeah, again, somebody else has mentioned about Vietnamese paper being really good. I do have a, a notepad that I reviewed, that memo notebook. That's made by paper made in Korea. 
Worst notebook I've ever had. Absolutely will never, ever, 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 ever buy one again. Uh, it's so bad, I'm actually considering just putting it in the bin because it I, I, it's it's unusable. It really is bad. Um, Bond Scales 1, Walmart is pretty much my only option that doesn't involve a two-hour round trip. Yeah, again, distance is such a pain in the butt. Um, Miss Marilyn Darling, yeah, yes, the PP pen and gear, uh, the pen and gear heavyweight notebook, superbly excellent. excellent. Ali Rose, Chris Signs. That pen bloke. Hi, Gary. Sorry I missed. No, welcome to you. Uh, we were just talking about your pen a while ago. Oh, just, there we go. That pen bloke. He's the gentleman that made this. Well worth going and checking out. He's got a website. Um, head over to Instagram. Uh, if I haven't put it in, somebody ask me and I can drop in his Insta link to his Instagram. Absolutely beautiful pens. There we go. I'm saving up for another one. Uh, Miss Marilyn Darling, the only problem with a heavyweight notebook paper is that it only comes in spiral bound. Yeah, I'm with you there. That can be a bit of a pain in the butt ski. That's why I like this, this Apica one. It lays really well. It lays lays down really flat. Will Hodge, uh, that pen bloke, love your work. Uh, Blonde Scales 1, I've got a few pen gear notebooks I got on clearance. Uh, Teresa Brooke. Uh, Teresa Harris, how do you prepare your tea? Been trying to wean, up co wean off coffee, but can't get my tea to taste good. Do you know, I'm, I'm ever so lazy. So, boil the kettle, pop the tea bag in the cup, and then I leave it. <laughs> Literally pour in the water, and I leave the bag until I've finished. I know you shouldn't do that. But I only use herbal teas. I don't drink tea tea. I've never liked... I know I'm British, but never liked tea. Um... So yeah, this is peppermint. I've got lemon and ginger will be the next one. Then in the cupboard, I've got uh, Earl Grey. That's the nearest I get to standard tea. But I just do all the same. Tea bag in the cup, pour in the hot water. I'm really lazy. Um, Alia Rose, if you haven't tried it, seed, Walmart carries their journals and that paper is excellent. So that's well worth trying out. I love getting all these tips. That pen below, thank you. Uh, Blonde Scales 1, I've got two of those. Uh... Miss Marilyn Darling, don't bother with their Exceed 100 JSM note paper. It's rather crap. Uh, and then Miss Marilyn Darling likes sugar. <laughs> okay, let's head to their presentation time. Let me get that going. Uh, back over to the screen. So last week's videos. So as I said, on Sunday last week, we had the final of the tournament. The winning pen, as we saw and it's of my shoulder, Twisby Eco. Um, Tuesday, I put out my thoughts on the tournament. So these are some thoughts I've got for things I want to do going forward with it. And the one I'm thinking of doing is, he says, let's open up the right spreadsheet. So that's results. So what I'm done looking at doing is next time, I'm going to have three pens per round. I think that'll make it a bit more interesting. And then some of the comments. So what I'll do is I'll split it into two. So the first, or oh, into three. The first one, chance style, will be something like, you know, Chinese pens. The second uh, three will be pens between, say, maybe up to 100, 150 Aussie dollars. Then the third, last three would be pens over that number, which will then give some more interesting results coming into the second round. And then the final round would end up with, you know, a Chinese pen, a under $150, say, pen, and then over $150. That's my current thinking on that. Friday, we had the March Inc. comparison. So that was Robert Oster Ride Green versus Pilot Irishizuku Shinryoku. Really, really pleased with how that, that went over. It had loads of comments on it. and really absolutely loved that video. It, it came out better than what I thought. I thought the, the greens were going to be very similar, uh, but then they ended up not being. And let me just go and click on that so we don't have... Click on that. There we go. That just removes that comment. There we go. Uh, Saturday, so yesterday, was Tricky Little Questions. That's one of my other channels. And that was my March uh, 10 True or False quiz Questions. Next week's video, so this afternoon, 
We've got the big one, the Visconti Homo Sapiens Dark Age First Impressions. Really looking forward to that. I say I've been able to start using the pen now in anger. I don't like to use the pen in any of my videos until the first impressions has gone out. Uh, you know, the idea is, you know, yes, I do some odd bits with it, but now I can really start using it. I'm really looking forward to that. Tuesday, it's I'm calling it Red Pen Redemption. So what it is, I'm taking a look at five reddish pens for my collection. Ended up being quite difficult, this. When I thought of it, I thought, oh, yeah, it's going to be easy. I've got loads of red pens. I don't have as many as I thought I did. Uh, so that's why I went for reddish. Uh, but, yeah, enjoyed that. So that's Tuesday, uh, March the 15th, fr Friday's the March halftime report. So I'll be recording that on Wednesday, I think. That means it will go up for members literally as soon as I've finished editing it. So that half time will be recorded and edited and then published to members on Wednesday and goes out to everybody else on Friday. So that's how I've been getting on with my pens so far this month. And as I say, this month, oh, so hard. The, uh, the theme is Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. So they're all pens made by an Australian maker. And all the inks are made by an Australian manufacturer. Don't have many Australian manufacturers for inks, so by that I mean Robert Oster or Van Diemen. But, but the idea was all Aussie. I did want to use an Aussie paper, but as we've said earlier on, I haven't been able to find any of this. I can't find a maker of Australian papers. I can make and find one where they bind papers from other country, but that's not what I was after. So I just used my Coles notebook, which I think was made in China. But it's the Mandalorian, so who cares? And then next Saturday, we've got Tricky Little Questions, my other channel. There, I'm taking a look at time perception and fear. So it's looking at these, this thing where they say when someone's really scared, when they're terrified of something, that time seems to really slow down to next to nothing and is really drawn out. So I'm taking a quick look at that. Uh, my books of the week. So I finished Terry Pratchett's Lords and Ladies. Uh, it was nice having a, a book with a witch. I do like the witches. Um, it was quite interesting. It was looking, you know, at, I would say a belief and how belief can shape what's going on. Quite interesting. I love Terry Pratchett books anyway. I say I, I'm enjoying this reread. And then uh, a couple of days ago, I started uh, Phantom by Terry Goodkind. So this is the next in this series, and this is like a mini series within the series of so it's a series of three books. This is book number two. Uh, in the last book, it was all about nobody believing Richard uh, because of what had happened, and uh, he was the only person who remembered it, and no one would believe it. And I found it actually quite interesting that in this next book, it's continuing in that that story where now they believe him, but they still have doubts. Um, so I'm only about. 15% of the way through, uh, but getting on with that. That's a big book. That might take me two or three weeks to read. Let's go back to the camera and see what comments we've got. Uh, Alia Rose, no tea, how dare. <laughs> now, I, I really have never liked tea. Um, I don't know why. I always like coffee. So herbal teas just, uh, are quite nice. Uh, that one's now finished. I've just finished that. So now we're switching over. We're switching over to the Marvel water... Uh, Marvel. Well, it is Marvel. Spider-Man. And I've just got plain um, cordial, orange cordial. So that's my morning one. I have two of those. I have one in the morning. I have one for the afternoon. Uh, actually, I don't like tea either. Uh, Gary, uh, don't forget to remove the comment. Oh, yeah, we can't see. I'm not yet. And I'm terrible for doing that. Uh, really looking forward to see your thoughts on the Homo sapiens. Yeah, you might have got, got some ideas already what I'm thinking of it. Oh, it's, it's just such an expensive pen. That's the only downside. Uh, Will Hodge, great agenda. I'll be watching. Brilliant. Thanks for that, Will. I say, what I try to do with my videos is I like to have a good variety of videos, you know, so different style or different types. And then... But what I'd like to do is have a consistent format with it within any particular type. So my first impressions videos always have the same format. Body walkthrough, size comparisons, fill with ink, 
writing sample thoughts. Same with my, like my showdowns. Um, but I like to mix them all around. So, yeah, the idea sometimes, like, uh, is it, you know, some, some I'm, not, I'm not, I don't want to mention channel names because I think that's horrible to do that. But what I like to, uh, you know, some channels where they're always doing the same type of videos. And I don't know about other people, I find that gets boring. Whereas having a good mix, but a standard format within a, a mix works really well. Let me just refresh the comments, see how we're going. I think that looks like all the comments for now. Let me just check here. Yep, can't see much. So I'll, I'll wait a couple of seconds. Wow, oh dear. Oh dear, I'm in trouble. We're done late again. I keep saying to my wife, it'll be only be an hour. It's now in 20 minutes now. Oh dear. I'll be in for a bit of a telling off. Well, those of you in the US, enjoy your daylight savings change. I'm sure it will be nice and fun for you, especially if you've got young kids or animals and they don't realise that lots have changed. Uh, so they still want to be up at the same time. Uh, thank you all. Uh, Miss Marilyn, darling, are you calling me boring? <laughs> no, definitely not. Because you, as similar, you have a wide, you know, you've got, you've got a range of different types of videos. But again, each video has its, or each type has its own structure that you keep on. Um, Blonde Scales 1, have a great week all. Yep, yeah, and to everybody else, thank you for your time. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget, membership's available. Uh, membership and the revenue from ads are what I use to actually go through and you know fund other purchases that's why i'm saying i'm i'm saving up so didn't buy anything last month my next youtube payment will come in about uh, about two weeks time that's when i'll be looking at my next pen and i'm looking at that ron uh, ron carl i think it was uh, the one i showed early earlier on maker i've not had any pens from uh, but an australian maker and then i'll be then saving for my next one which will be most probably that pen bloke or a pens by Casey. I'm not sure when I got their money. That, that's when I go and look and see which pen really jumps out at me. So thank you all. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like. Every time you comment just helps with a YouTube algorithm. Uh, if you're not already su subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, a few more comments. Thank you, Gary. This was a lot of fun. Thank you all for joining. It's you that makes it fun. I'm, j I'm just replying to your comments. Good night, everybody. Happy Sunday, Gary. Uh, Chris, enjoy your weekends. Uh, BJ, thanks for bringing us together. Uh, Miss Marilyn, darling, bye, everyone. Have a great week. Take care. See you all next week. BJ, thumbs up, everybody. So thank you all. And oh, Ricardo, have a nice weekend. Will Hodge, bye, all. Be safe. Thumbs up for Miss Marilyn, Marilyn darling. Uh, one last refresh of the comments. So I'll leave the comments open whilst the intro, well, the intro, while the outro is playing. Thank you all, and I'll talk to you again soon.